What could you truly become capable of if you were living in greater resonance and synchronicity with your essence? If you were able to be aligning with your divine every day and creating from that energy, are you ready to explore and activate that? Let's get started aligning divine. Now, here's your host, Soul and Body Coach, Keisha Clark. <laughs> Hello and welcome, and wherever you are in this great, big, beautiful world, thank you for coming to play whenever and however and wherever you're coming to play with today's episode of A Lighting Divine Radio Show. I'm Keisha Clark. I'm your host, and I'm delighted to have you join us. Your um, participation with this show, in whatever way it shows up, is a contribution, and I appreciate um, what you are contributing to this conversation and to the world, whether you know it or not <laughs> yet. So um, here on Inspired Choices Network, we're having a good time doing things about being inspired. And if you've never jumped into this show before, um, Aligning Divine is all about having the joy of lining up with your essence and living it every day. So we have conversations that are um, more about thought-provoking, or I guess I should say thought provocation. <laughs> That's an interesting way to say it. Uh, diving into some questions, all of course playing with energy, vibrational reality, quantum reality, um, all of those things that are kind of in the mystical and mysterious category of life and living, and yet very much a part of our life and living. So I have a rather different uh, point of view about this whole being a spiritual being, having a human experience, um, and that's part of what I weave into the conversations here on Aligning Divine. So it's not about having answers or getting answers. It is about awareness, discovery, exploration, having a really good time, and being inspired. <laughs> sometimes that happens with the things we say, and sometimes that occurs with the energies that get stirred up, and sometimes you might just come up with something all on your own as playing with this, these conversations. Um, and however it shows up, awesome. <laughs> so today's topic, uh, we are diving into sovereignty. Yes, sovereignty. And, uh, of course, if you're anywhere in or around the, the states, uh, the United States, you are aware that uh, we're coming up on the 4th of July festivities. And for a lot of people, you've probably been hearing the conversations or seeing the social media posts having to do with independence and freedom and um, all of the things that we have come to make that mean. And so when this topic kind of waved at me, um, it just seemed kind of fun and appropriate, and it sort of resonated <laughs> for us to play with this topic today, uh, since this is the day before those festivities, the day of the live recording anyway. Um, when you're catching it, it might be after the July 4th, <laughs> so um, sovereignty still applies, really, regardless of what day it is or what holiday we're celebrating, and that's one of the cool things about uh, getting to play with the shows and the topics is they really never go out of style or they never go stale. Um, so if you haven't played with Inspired Choices very much, you will find there are a host of hosts <laughs> on the station who have amazing insights and inspirations that they share. Um, so I invite you to play with any number of those people and those topics. If you are looking for some some ways or some possibilities to play with to stretch beyond your own comfort zone, um, this is a fantastic place to find some tools and some tips and some funny conversations to do that. So how does it get even awesomer than that? Uh, and if you've never played with me before, I am Keisha Clark, as I said, and I'm here with my co-host, Lila Rue. She is my great, big, amazing, magical being in an itty-bitty kitty body in this incarnation. And so we rolled pretty much together on every show. She gets to say a few things. She will chime in when she feels it appropriate. And so uh, just in case you hear her, you'll know who that is. And she's also my co-creator, 
or one of co-creators in my amazing life. Um, I have two others who are primarily outside, also in Kitty Buddies, and they are a part of my life and my work and my play and uh, my world. It's pretty amazing. So uh, if you hadn't noticed, I am a little bit different <laughs> in many respects, which is what I think is the fun thing about, uh, another fun thing about here on Inspired Choices you might notice that many of us, uh, the hosts here, we we have different points of view about the world and about life and about bodies and business, money and relationship and all those fun things that you know we deal with every day. Um, so there are some nice uh, varieties to play with here, and uh, so I do feel right at home with this amazing crew. And. Uh, what are the the thing that I do? The thing that I play with <laughs> is I am a soul and body intuitive and coach. I get to work with people who are really ready to explore um, who the heck am I and what did I want to come to this planet for. Sometimes um, they might say that laughingly, and sometimes they might actually be really frustrated when they're saying that. I've been in both of those places and pretty many places in between um, myself with that question. And what I find is that a lot more opens up to us when we stretch beyond the linear application of life <laughs> and we get into the more multidimensional application. And that's the field I love to play in. So, um, there's no official name, and so my name for it is a soul and body intuitive and coach. And we play with all things energy. We communicate with all energies. We bring in all of the aspects of you from all of your existence, whether that is different lifetimes, different dimensions, different whatever you want to call it. We're going to add all of it into the conversation and into the process, and it uh, it's truly pretty incredible what can happen when we're willing to go beyond what we can perceive or beyond what our five sensory based living allows us to perceive and actually stretch into what we know beyond our cognitive knowing. Um, so I actually call that the entirety of our existence and that's really where I like to play. So if that's something that you might be curious about, you can always check in with me. Um, you can send me an email. You can find me on Facebook. If you want to email me, it's Keisha at KeishaClark.live. And that link uh, to the website is actually on this replay page. And you can just scroll down and click if you want a shortcut to that. So, all right. Done for the introductions. Let's jump into the topic of sovereignty. So what do the words sovereign being bring up for you? It's kind of an interesting thing, isn't it? Have you ever considered yourself or your being to be sovereign? And what would it be like to allow your soul to be the sovereign of your life? Hmm. Do you dare choose that for yourself? <laughs> or have you gotten comfortable being at the effect of someone else's reign? Yes, I like to do a play on words. <laughs> so this week we are exploring sovereignty in and as the wholeness of our body, our soul, and self. And I like to say, you you might be familiar with the term body, mind, spirit. I like to say um, body, self, and soul. And one, because in Aligning Divine, we're playing with all things to do with lining up with that soul essence of us and living it every day. So bringing that soul essence into our everyday life and living, bringing the information that is beyond the cognitive into our everyday life. And the first thing about sovereignty, um, it, it's come to be used, I think, largely in conversations or in the context of having to do with governing bodies such as states and um, monarchies and um, ruling families of, of whatever kind, ruling tribes, um, depending on the, the era we're talking about. And I found it kind of intriguing um, as I was playing with this word. There's a lot that comes up with uh, sovereignty. There are many different... Um, 
movements and um, kind of organizations <laughs> having to do with becoming sovereign as a citizen. Um, and there are also writings on sovereignty to, that has to do that have to do with soul sovereignty or sovereign souls. And one of the books that I discovered is actually a book called The Sovereign Soul, and it is a book on Sufism and the, the the roots of Sufism. And I have not read the book. Um, I've read some things about the book. It looks very much intriguing. Um, and as I was just kind of rolling all of this around, um, I thought it was really fascinating to just see how much of a charge there is on this word, for one thing. Um, so maybe we could start with, Whatever sovereignty has come to mean for you, is it something that brings you a sense of yes for yourself, or is it something that brings you more of a? Do you get more of a tension when you start to play with the word sovereign, or or even just hear it in your in your in your quiet voice <laughs> in your head when the word sovereign or sovereignty is presented to you? What is the energy that it stirs up? Or maybe it doesn't. And if it doesn't, that's fine too. Um, So I initially was, when I started out doing a little bit of the prep for this week's conversation, I initially was looking at it from the soul perspective, as in S-O-U-L, perspective. And so first, however, because there was this, so much information on sovereignty having to do with everything government. Um, I wonder how much we have adopted the governmental context of sovereignty. So if that's really where you kind of have written this off to, would you be willing to explore a little bit further, firstly? Would you be willing to have your own awareness of what sovereignty is for you. And as we do that, let's look a little bit at the word sovereignty and sovereign. So, of course, I refer to my favorite online (laughs) resource. It is the Online Etymology Dictionary because I love to look at um, not only the roots of words, but the time frames that words kind of showed up Um, because it's always fascinating to me to look at the energy that the word was initially meant to convey or um, the energy that the word was created from or out of. Uh, So when we look at the word sovereignty as a noun in the etymology, the online etymology dictionary, um, it's noted as around the mid 14th century and it simply says preeminence um, from the Anglo-French, uh, I'm going to do my best to say this, sovereignet, and the old French sovereignet, um, which I probably mutilated that word, <laughs> meaning authority, ruler, or rule, supremacy of power, or rank. Now, interesting to me, the existence as an independent state that wasn't used in that context until a good almost 300 years later. So I think kind of fascinating that the way we use the word today prominently is not the way the word was initially um, brought to be. However, they do both contexts do have to do with um, power and rank and ruling. So when we go to the word sovereign as a noun, it's uh, from the late 13th century, just a little bit earlier. Superior, ruler, master are the first words that uh, are presented here. Um, And also sovereign, lord, and ruler. And it is the noun use of the adjective meaning highest, supreme, or chief. 
And the um, also you might have heard as an adjective the the reference to the gold coin. And that was um, first recorded around the late 15th century. So as an adjective, also, we're, we're still in the same ballpark. Great, superior, supreme, highest, supreme, chief. Um, this is what I thought was kind of interesting. The word as it is spelled today, as the, the last part actually being the word reign, R-E-I-G-N, is not the way it was originally spelled. Um, that was actually added later. So within the root of the word is um, the, oh gosh, now I've forgotten what that abbreviation is for, the Proto-Indo-European, I think is what that is, um, root is the word upper, meaning over. And that is where I kind of felt the connection kind of click for me. Um, there is that essence of superior or over. So that's where I kind of want to mm, explore this just a little bit or take this in that direction. Um, when we think of the word over, a lot of the times with regard to the word ruler or governing body or supremacy, there's... There's this over as in a um, superiority, as in there has to be someone ruling over a body of people, and there has to be something under that rule. And I, I get that. I can see it that way. Uh, I can see how that came to be a popular application or a popular context of the word with regard to how we've to, you know the courses that we've chosen with different countries and regions respectively um, having to do with government and and running of those countries and those regions and so so I get that so now I would like to set all of that aside <laughs> I would like to suspend all of that and really look at okay if we're talking about power over Maybe that is where our first slide off of the the path, as it were, <laughs> um, began to occur. And the, let's see. So I can see this in my head in a way that I want to say it. It's, it's putting it into human words that's presenting a little bit of a challenge for me. So um, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's take our first break and um, let me kind of find <laughs> some words or divine these words. And um, what I invite you to do is just continue to play with the energy of what Sovereign brings up for you and with regard to um, anywhere that you have a default sort of setting for this word that it has to do with supremacy or power over, uh, as in some someone having power over another. And what does that bring up for you? How many memories do you have of however many lifetimes, whether you can distinguish them or not, the essence of all of that that I perceive is this resistance that starts to occur for a lot of us um, as this as we talk about this word that is having to do with all of our history or our experience that we have some level of awareness of that has to do with resisting, that has to do with battle, that has to do with revolution or war, that has to do with some sort of a fight energy or a battle energy around gaining our freedom and gaining our independence and gaining our rights and our privileges. So what is that for you? Is that even bubbling up for you at this moment? And if it is, I invite you to take a breath and tap into what do you know beyond what has been created as the definition or the, the application of this word? What is the energy of this word that you actually know that that's where we're headed to, what it truly is for us and for you? 
So respectively and collectively, we will continue this conversation once we return. You are listening to Aligning Divine here on Inspired Choices Network. We will be right back. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. Mm-hmm. Welcome forward and back to the next segment of Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network. I'm Keisha Clark. I am grateful, honored, and so pleased that you're playing with us today for the conversation around sovereignty. And yeah, I feel like we kind of cracked a little bit of this armor plating <laughs> right before the break. Um, just tapping into this amount of resistance that I was receiving. Um, That doesn't mean that it was all yours, (laughs) so you don't have to take that on. Uh, What I did become aware of, even more so over the break, was that the level of intensity um, just might have something to do with all of the conditioning we've had over however many lifetimes or however many movies we've watched or songs we've listened to or stories we've read um, about those different periods of our history, collectively and respectively, that do have to do with uh, resisting a ruler, resisting a ruling party, um, and and even having uh, battle and war with the ruling parties. So perhaps we could just acknowledge that we've played that game maybe more than a couple of times in more than a couple of lifetimes, and we've done a bit of resisting of the sovereigns, (laughs) resisting of the ruling, resisting of the powers at be, resisting of the supreme rulers, resisting of the reigning uh, families or, or powers as well. So how much resisting have you done to sovereignty? Oh, my God. There is a huge charge around that right there. And if that, didn't, if that wasn't really something you, you noticed for you, that's totally fine. Uh, when I ask the question, what I notice is the resistance to sovereignty is, is very much um, active. And what I find really ironically fascinating about that is that sovereignty is organic it is a it is a natural state that if and when we're willing to allow sovereignty for ourselves we completely have and can have and yet it's like we've been very masterful 
in creating this sort of labyrinth for ourselves to get to our sovereignty, to know that we are a sovereign being. Each of us is a sovereign being. Now, does that mean we're separate? Well, okay, first I'll ask you, what are you aware of? (laughs) I had a no for that. Because simultaneously, we can be sovereign beings and be connected and collectively co-creating toward what we desire in a way that works for all of us. Perhaps that was a part of the root of the documents for many of the countries, for many of the cultures even. Um, that were set forth to create the guidelines for or the basic structures for the managing of those countries and those organizations. And yet, here we are today still in the 21st century, and for many people, the intensity of resistance is very much an everyday reality. So what is that about, my friend? And in whatever way we participate with that individually, for everyone who's listening to this, who is at a point where you would like it to be different, I invite you to just ask yourself, okay, what am I actually contributing to here? Am I contributing to the resistance? Or am I contributing to the aligning? Am I contributing to the resistance? Or am I contributing to a greater resonance of of co-creation, of collectiveness? Because it's not about that we all have to think the same. While there have been plenty of people throughout our history who might want to present that point as necessary... It's not about that we all have to think and believe and live and function in the same way. If that were what we came here for, I think our planet would look very different. Actually, it is our differences, it is our distinctions that bring the the adventure for us and that actually bring us information and actually can bring us together in a very powerful way. And yet, when we are not acknowledging our sovereignty and when we are not functioning from our sovereignty, are we truly able to be showing up authentically and are we able to be making empowered choices for ourselves and for anyone and everyone that we desire to contribute to or that we care about. This is an interesting uh, thing that I'm perceiving, this sort of, like this, mm, I'm going to use the word, like this energetic mechanism that has been put in place or created and put in place that sort of, keeps us on this hamster wheel of, in some aspect of ourselves, knowing, perceiving the energy that that sovereignty is, and yet resisting it at the same time, based on these definitions that we've come to more commonly use the word out of. So, wow, where can we go with that? Let's take a look at um, some of the details. Perhaps we could do that. So I think maybe where we could go is um, let's pull in some words. So with sovereignty, uh, I'd like to look at the sort of comparison contrast kind of thing of the words. uh, The first ones that come up are the words ownership versus power. So where have you made sovereignty about ownership? Ooh, yeah. And where have you sort of bought that 
definition or bought that particular way of utilizing or applying the word? Have you just accepted sovereignty to mean something to do with ownership? I can see where that would be a way that it's been applied, and I, I think that's obvious in, in the way many things are done these days, that sovereignty has to do with ownership. And I think there is, well, for me, I can say there is accuracy in, in that. However, it's not the ownership of something outside of you, and yet that is a way that I see it often applied. Okay, so there's one. Versus power. So what if sovereignty actually has to do with power, and power is not about owning something outside of you? What if it's the power of you? Right? Whew. <laughs> now, of course, this knocks on the door for many of us of our how much of our power are we willing to acknowledge and and own so here we come with ownership again are we willing to own our power without going down the millions of rabbit holes of these stories that have been gosh in place for i don't know how many eons about you you become dangerous if you're powerful, if people know you're powerful. And that's another one of those little cruxes. <laughs> you're not dangerous if you're powerful. You're just dangerous if people find out how powerful you are. Well, I have news for you, friends. You're powerful. <laughs> you're freaking powerful. <laughs> Simply the fact that you exist. <laughs> you are powerful, Okay. Get over it. <laughs> I feel like that moment it instruct. I'm just going to give you a little slap here. Get over it. You're powerful. You are powerful. You are powerful. As a creator, as a, an inspiration in the world, as a contribution to this world, as an expression of the universe, you are powerful. Now, what are you willing to to do with that power? How are you willing to play with that power? Are you willing to actually even acknowledge it? Have you been trying to avoid it or deny it? And if you have, I could see how that would absolutely set you up to put your power outside of you and therefore allow yourself to be at the effect of the ownership aspect of how we apply sovereignty, as in someone else owns you. Someone else makes the rules that you have to follow. Someone else puts laws in place that you have to abide by. Someone else, and no, I'm not saying we shouldn't have laws, so for everybody who went there, come on now, stay with us. Someone else creates the parameters that you have to play within or work within or function within. I can totally see how. If you're not willing to claim, well, even acknowledge your power to begin with, that it would set you up to give it away. It would set you up to be without it or feel like you were without it. Interesting thing about power, isn't it? And power is another word that we've come to often apply in a way that is more to do with uh, power over some external something or someone than the power of the creator that we truly are and can be. So where are you with your own power? And yes, there is muscle power. There's a physical power, absolutely. And I'm actually inviting you to look at the power that is beyond the physical aspect of you. We could include that. And are you even, have you even allowed yourself to just tap into the power of you, the being, the powerfulness of you, body, self, and soul, the power of 
all of you. Wow. That might change some things. <laughs> and I know that for a lot of us where we go right away, pretty much instantaneously when we talk about power is what do I do with it? How do I use it? How am I supposed to use it? Well, here's another news flash. That's not something anyone can tell you. You can certainly look around and get a lot of information about the possibilities of how to play with your power, but only you can actually experiment with it and create with it and develop your relationship with it and get it uh, get it into your multisensory capabilities. I don't know if I just said, I, might, I could have said that better. It's not about getting it into, it's about bringing it through your multi, multi-sensory capabilities. So the five senses, as well as all of your beyond physical sensory capabilities or capacities. Power does not have to be used only to defend your body or some other physical um in some other physical scenario. You have a power available to you and you have a power within you that shows up and is totally accessible to you long before anything has to be happening in the three-dimensional world. And what if that is that supreme element that is so often associated with the word sovereignty? That is the soul essence of you. At the soul essence, you are totally connected to the entire universe. You are a part of the universe. So as you experience and experiment with connecting to that soul essence of you, there is a supreme you. There is a supreme being that is you. It is an an energy that is over the rest of you. Or you could also say an energy that is over the part of you that is expressing in this time space reality. I know we're we're getting a little woo for some of you. I get that. I appreciate that. I respect that. And I'm going to nudge you <laughs> and challenge you a little bit to keep going and just suspend the separation or the notion of separation and allow your awareness to really come in play here or come into play here. So when we talk about supreme reign, that is simply the super, that is the over, that is the, the, you could say governing, that is the, the you, that is the consciousness of you, that when you're willing to play with this and when you're willing to have your relationship with this from a, an, a conscious state of you. You actually can tap into this and you get an overview. You get a perspective from a very different space and energy. You tap into the sovereignty of you and you are able to have so much more of the possibilities that are available to you, so much more of your awareness. So are you willing to create your life from that? Are you willing to choose it, firstly, and are you willing to create your life from that? Are you willing to have that at your disposal? Hmm. That's an interesting kind of a something there. Okay, so this feels like a kind of a 
a good place to take a moment, take a breath, just be with this, just let yourself play with this. And whatever's coming up for you is totally fine. Acknowledge it. I invite you to to just let it flow rather than make any of it significant. This is not about making some conclusion that you're doing something wrong. This is really about just diving in even further, venturing in even more to where are you functioning from? And for today's topic, are you allowing yourself to even have and claim and know the sovereignty of you, the you as a sovereign being beyond any of the default definitions that are really popular in this day and age. Yeah. So in that space, (laughs) let's just enjoy the moment. You are listening to Aligning Divine with myself, Keisha Clark. We are here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we will be back in just a moment. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome back and forward to the next segment of Aligning Divine. We are playing today with the topic of sovereignty. And wow, there's a whole lot of this, like more than I really was aware of <laughs> that was going to come up in this conversation. And at the same time, I'm really fascinated and intrigued by it. And I think it's pretty cool that um, we can play with this. Um, for everyone who's willing to do that. Um, it's also pretty cool for me just that our live recording of this show is um, the beginning of July in 2019, and we also have quite a bit of activity going on in our solar system with our stars and our planets. And um, so it's, it's really powerful um, as I'm sitting here playing with all of this and with you, it's very powerful to me, and I'm perceiving a very um, that it is a very powerful thing to to be playing with this um, in all of this energy that really is all about new beginnings and embracing our power, <laughs> our inner power, what we might call our inner power. Um, I'm careful to use the words inner and outer, but um, I think that might apply here. And and just our willingness to firstly acknowledge that we have it and secondly actually choose to play with it and experiment with it and and get acquainted with it in a really different way than what conventional reality or conventional custom um might offer us. Uh, so I thank you for for being willing to to entertain that possibility or play with that idea, and I invite you to continue that in whatever way really works for you. Um, empowerment is a huge piece for me, and it's a huge um, desire <laughs> of mine that more of us are living empowered lives and 
Um, it's part of the, the premise of this whole show. Um, it's also part of the premise of my work and and how I live and who I be and how I be. Um, there's just nothing quite like the energy of of empowerment. It's when we have more awareness of ourselves, we have so much more available to us. And the thing that is available to us is the thing that, for me, is a huge part of sovereignty, um, and that is the power of our choice. And that is really where I see all things pointing to when we're talking about a topic like sovereignty. Um, all of the, on, on both sides, whether we're looking at the conflictual aspects having to do with sovereignty or whether we're looking at the um, the communal aspects, you know, the, the things that are really working. It's all having to do with power of choice. So we've talked about power in the previous segment of the show. If you're just joining, I invite you to dive into the replay in just a short little bit here. It will be available. Um, so there's also this aspect of sovereignty, and this is going to lead us into, this is going to tie into the choice, the power of choice. The ways that we can play with our power, we can actually choose to delegate power, meaning we can extend privilege <clears throat> to another party or other parties. Um, in the case of the country you live in, it might be the case that by showing up in that country and participating in that um, particular, you know, as a resident of that country, you're agreeing <clears throat> to delegate certain powers to the governing body of that country to take care of certain details to provide at least a minimum standard of living and care as for you being a member of that that country or that region there's also um another version which is um handing over your power giving up your power surrendering your power so delegate versus handing over handing over your power essentially is giving it away now, which would you rather do? Delegate your power or give it up? A lot of people give up their power. <laughs> and of course, we can do this in many ways. So we won't go into all of the different ways we give up our power. But one of the ways we give up our power is when we're not willing to actually acknowledge it. So if you're not acknowledging your power, as I said in the previous segment, if you're not acknowledging your power, it, it's kind of like, you know, having a, a million dollars sitting in the room with you and and it's just, maybe it's in a, a box, maybe it's in a, a safe, or maybe it's in a file cabinet. <laughs> and if you're not acknowledging it because you simply can't see it, you don't get to play with what it could create. Have you ever considered it that way? So having your power and having the power of your choice, you get to choose what to do with your power and you get to choose how to use it. And when you are actively participating in your own life, you are going to be exercising your power of choice. And what does that do? Well, it's in, you know, the phrase, the power of your choice. I think you might have, we might have heard this a lot, especially right now, because choice is a hot topic. Power is pretty much always a hot topic. Um, so it's easy to say that that phrase, your power of choice, the power of your choice. It's easy to say that. And yet, have you really looked at or considered what that actually is, the actual power of your choice is enormous. 
So let's take it one one further. What if your power is in your choice? Your choices are the ways you get to play with your power. So just like... Uh, I'm kind of, I want to link this to something we were talking about earlier in that if you're willing to acknowledge that you have choice <laughs> and begin to exercise it, do you get a sense of how much more you could actually be playing with in your life and as your life? Not just people, but possibilities, all of the things um, all of the creations that are desiring to be a part of your life, all of the relationships you could be choosing, all of the adventures, really, whether that shows up as um, relationships or work projects or personal projects, are you? do you get a sense of how much more could be available to you if you're willing to acknowledge you have choice and you have power. And those are two things that you can use to change anything and everything. And you never have to go to an extreme in a physical sense if you don't want to. Just by acknowledging them and beginning to use them, you can create dynamic shift and change and exponentially change your life. So choice might also be considered a privilege for some of us because, yes, there are regions on this planet that even today choice is narrowly offered and allowed to the residents of those regions. Now, at some level of their being, collectively, there's an agreement, there's a willingness to let go of that choice and that power. And if you wish to change that, you can choose that as well. There's no thing that is ever fixed or permanent because we at all times have our sovereignty We at all times have our power available to us. We at all times and at every moment have choice available to us. It may not look like we think it should in a certain situation, and yet I invite you to remember always it is available to you. And sometimes... The choice might just need to be what feels like a little bitty choice, like I'm going to take a breath right now. But one choice leads to another and another and another. And every choice changes the energy. And every time you change the energy, you are bringing more of you to the moment. And every time you do that, you have the possibility to connect with and as the sovereign being that you are. And remember, you have the power to choose and create all that you desire in every moment, in every lifetime, in every dimension. So I invite you, my dear friend, to play with that this week. Exercise your power. Exercise your choice. And begin to know the sovereign being that you truly are and that you have supreme reign over you, your body, your life, your creation, and all the possibilities that are available to you. So, until next week, may you be lining up with your essence and living it every day as the sovereign being you be. Keisha Clark has more to share next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And for now, she is cheering you on to create an awesome week of lining up with your...